afternoon viewers. Today I thought we'd talk about why when you have chronic pain you can't exercise. So in our bodies we have neural tissue. Now if you don't know what that is it's basically your nerves that supply your muscles, it supplies your organs, it supplies everything in your body so that it can function properly, so that it can fire to contract. So your brain sends a message via a nerve to the muscle to say you must do this. Now <clears throat> In the different nerves in your body, each one is stretched in a different position. So our median nerve, which runs in the middle of our arms, is stretched in that position with your arms out wide. And if you tilt your hands back, you'll feel like a, it's quite an uncomfortable pull if you've got neural shortage. Some people can do this and they feel nothing. So if you do it and you lift your arms up to your ears, you'll feel that it reduces. But if you pull your arms down, you'll feel that the, the intensity of that pulling, that discomfort of it becomes worse. So the nerve starts in your, well, start, comes, originates from your brain and then it comes down your neck and then you get your brachial plexus which comes out and splits into three nerves that supplies your entire arm with function. So the median nerve is stretched like this. The radial nerve is stretched by turning your hand in, bringing it down and pulling it back. So lifting it behind, by, behind you like that. And your ulnar nerve is stretched but that, that funny position where everybody puts their hands on their eyes upside down to get the goggles, that's your ulnar nerve. So that's your upper lip. Then you've got, it runs down your back in your thoracic area and in your lumbar area. And if you do chest slides, for instance, if, you, if you're doing side to side, you'll feel it in your, in your thoracic area there. If you're twisting, you can feel um, the nerve being irritated. If you're curling down towards touching your toes, most people feel it in their calves. Now, it runs down your spine, and then as it reaches your lumbar area, then it splits across the two and then runs down to your legs and ends in your feet. So when you go for um, a reflexology where they massage your feet, they're working on the nerve points, and each point is linked with a different organ, it's linked with a different part of your body. And when you do exercises, if you're going to jump on your calves, so the action of the jumping, because your calf acts as, as a pumping action to pump the blood up, but you've also got points in your calf behind your knee and around your ankle that are um, points where the nerve gets stuck. So every joint area that you have, so here by your elbow, your ulnar nerve can get stuck here. And that's where you get your um, golfer's elbow. And on this side, you'll get your tennis elbow where your radial nerve runs through. So when the muscle gets tight, it presses down on the nerve, which can then cause numbness in the hand or pins and needles down the hand or pain. So, um, and then you've got again a nerve that runs through here that can give you, then you can get your carpal tunnel if that nerve is compressed on those areas there. So what you want to do is you need to release the muscles um, spasm so that they don't press on the nerves, which then provide the pains in, in your hands. <clears throat> so um, when you stretch the nerve, um, or you don't have full range of movement. So if you can't do that action there without feeling pain up your arm, it means you have compromised nerves. If you look down and you feel the pulling down in your lower back as opposed to in your neck, then you've got compromised nerves. If you feel <clears throat> when you're bending forward towards touching your toes and you feel a pulling sensation all the way down your body and it's not a, it's not a comfortable muscle stretch. It's an uncomfortable, nasty, nervy pain. And that means that your nerves are shortened. So there's, it's either a, a compromised as a result of an injury that you've had where you've got a scoliosis now, or you've got muscle spasms in the joint areas. So if you're doing a lot of computer work and you're typing and you've got pressure on your forearms from resting on the desk all the time and you're typing away, or um, overuse of your hand or your thumb, uh, where they call it overuse injury, the muscles become tight, they press on the nerve, and then the nerve gets irritated. And when the nerve gets irritated, it doesn't like to be overstretched. So if you're going to be running, that pounding action that you get of the calf pumping, pumping, pumping as it's being um, jumping off the ground, you know, it's, it's, it's taking off and jumping, that causes a lot of irritation of the nerve, nerves in your calves, which then will activate a migraine. So you're thinking, oh, you know, I can just, it's just a little run around the block and that, and it's just, but that, that pumping action where your calf has to work hard, that irritates the nerve, especially if your calf is shortened, it will irritate the nerve, and then it will activate a migraine. Any other form, if you're lifting heavy boxes, if you're doing <clears throat> any exercise 
that has to do sudden movements, so aerobic exercises where you're kicking your legs and swinging your arms, anything like that will stretch the nerve and you might not necessarily feel it while you are exercising, but within a half an hour to an hour after you've exercised, you'll feel you get the aura coming on and you'll feel the headache starting at the back of the head and then it'll come in and it'll cause severe pain and activate the vomiting or you'll have to, you feel like you want to just sit and push on your head to deactivate the pain. So one needs to be very, very careful that you do not activate your nerves when you exercise. So with chronic pain, the movements always need to be very gentle, very slow which is why I often start with just stretches because if you've got shortened muscles as I mentioned they're going to press on the nerve which is going to cause the the migraines that you're getting so you need to make sure you've got full range of movement in all your joints which is another video that we've spoken about on what is full range of movement so go and look for it and um, this helps you then release the pressure on the nerve the nerves can then move more freely and not be irritated and then you won't activate your migraines so if you don't have full move, movement, I would not go and run. I would not do exercises that are going to compromise your nerves because it's, it's too painful and uncomfortable. And that's where the problem comes in that a lot of people that are in the, in the sport industry don't quite understand because most of them are super fit, super flexible, super healthy. They, they haven't had injuries necessarily. So they don't always understand when you get a chronic pain patient that comes to the biokineticist and doesn't understand why they can't do those exercises. They're not flexible enough. So, <clears throat> and they can't do 10 reps, they can maybe do two. So then you feel you're wasting your money, you're wasting your time, you're wasting your everything, but it's slow but steady wins the race. And you just have to persevere, but it's gotta be very slow. Sometimes it's so slow that you feel you're doing nothing. So I had this gentleman who, um, he had a severe shift on his back when he walked. So when he walked, his upper body would shear on the lower body. And he had, he was complaining of pins and needles in his, by both his legs. And he used to walk with walking sticks and he had severe pain. And every single exercise that we tried to do with him activated his pain and made him a thousand times worse. So we had to reduce the level of exercise so significantly that for the first four weeks, all he was doing was a pelvic floor contraction, which is where you just pull up your anus and, and your vagina or your, your, your scrotums. So you pull it up and you hold it there and then you release and then you hold and release and you hold and you release and you do it in a neutral position, which is what we'll talk about with the Pilates video. What is neutral? And he just lay on the bed in his neutral position, pulling up his scrotum for four weeks before we could start doing um, a bridge exercise. And even when we started the bridge exercise, we list, literally lifted a centimeter to a centimeter and a half before he experienced pain. I think we actually only got a, a half a tilt of his back and then he experienced pain. So with chronic pain patients, you must never ever go into pain. You must just go feeling, okay, I don't feel anything. It doesn't feel like I'm doing exercise. That's great. But within <clears throat> two to four weeks, you'll start feeling different. And you'll find that certain exercises are easier to do and then you progress to the next exercise and so it progresses throughout but if you are going to constantly irritate your nerves and constantly not have support which is why we do the pilates as well to get your core stability if you do not have the core stability and you do not have the flexibility you'll irritate the nerve and then you will get your migraine or your other body it can give you pain everywhere you know i've, I've been had experience where my calves become so stiff i cannot walk for two months it's ridiculous and then you think, oh, well, all I did was I started skipping. You know, what's skipping? Skipping is awful. So um, those are things you don't want to do high impact exercises when you've got chronic pain because they will annihilate your body and make you feel like hell. And then you're going to feel more depressed because you can't exercise. And everybody tells you, but you must exercise to get over your chronic pain, which is true. But Qigong is an is a exercise that you can do. And I put on a video on Qigong. So go and start with that. The stretching video, you can go and do that. You can do Pilates, go and do that. So I've even got little Pilates DVDs that you can purchase. I've got them available at my practice. You can purchase them, take them home and start with that. And always work within your limits of pain. If you do get a headache, put heat on, take your pills and try and figure out which movement it was that activated it. Avoid that movement for a couple of weeks longer and then go back to basics all the time. So don't overstretch your nerves. You could use a, a nerve, you can use this as a, as a stretch where you take it, 
till you feel it's, it's just pulling and then you just wiggle onto that pull but don't do it more than 10 times a day if you're going to go and do 10 20 30 and then you're going to do later again you will have a headache because you're irritating the nerve go and massage your body get it loosened up get more flexible through stretching where you are always um, avoiding to stretch the nerve so you will stretch the muscle <clears throat> but you won't add the nerve in to the stretch you'll deactivate the nerve stretch by just focusing on the muscle so for instance if we had to take the hamstring stretch everybody likes to put their leg on and lean forward but if you've got nerve compromised you will feel the, the stretch in your calf and not necessarily the hamstring so all you do is you bend your leg a little bit you'd put it on a on a chair is better than a, a high surface you'll bend the knee a little bit and you'll bend forward isolating the stretch to just in your leg you'll feel nothing in the calf when you feel nothing in the calf, your nerve has been excluded and you're only stretching the hamstring. So you're deactivating the pressure on the, on the muscle, which is taking off the pressure off the nerve and deactivating here again with the, with the calf. We're not going to stretch the calf bending forward. That's a neural stretch. So you're going to take your leg behind you and just do an ordinary calf stretch with the leg behind, leaning forward. You'll only feel it in the calf, avoiding the nerve pull. And um, it's a comfortable, familiar muscle stretch. And not an uncomfortable horrible nerve stretch so make sure you know the difference between that you, you become very in tune with your body when you do these things and that is important because you need to know am i over stretching my nerves or is it just muscle am i getting a headache because of the nerve uh, pull or is it just because i've done too much very important to know the difference so enjoy the video um, send it to your friends that are limited in movement Remember, if you can only reach your knees, you've got severe compromised muscles as well as nerve um, involvement. So make sure that you loosen it up and get going. Thanks for watching this video. Subscribe and like the channel and send to your friends. Have a fabulous afternoon.